Welcome to day one of the week of Ultra Magnuses. And I guess say farewell to the week of wrapping up Kingdom Wave 2. Normally I wouldn't do this because I'm not some kind of heathen. I know that the week begins on Mondays and ends on Sunday. And it is raw, unfiltrated bullshit that people claim it begins on Sunday and ends on Saturday. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are the weekend, not the weekend and begin. Stop with this false week conspiracy. But yes, I normally wouldn't do this because it's not the start of a week. But I just in the last several days, really, got a whole slew of new Ultra Magnus figures, and it's just too perfect to not talk about them all in a row. I also thought it would be fun to end all the Kingdom Wave 2 videos in one shot. Before I get into this video, I'd like to make you all aware that someone on Reddit called One Turns to None made a subreddit for my channel. So, first off, I'd like to say thank you to One Turns to None. I don't know who you are on YouTube, but thanks, that was an unexpected treat to find out about. And thanks to Bergen08 for bringing it to my attention. And if you guys want to be members of the subreddit, I'll include a link here for you. I don't know that I'll be super active over there, but I will pop my head in from time to time to see what's going on. Anyways, one more thing before we start. With the addition of the Kingdom Ultra Magnus, I now have too many Siege Ultra Magnuses in my collection. I bought the spoilers and sidebox basically entirely to find out what was in it. I didn't really want another one of the exact same figure in a different paint scheme, but it was well done enough that it seemed like a waste to return it. So, I've held on to it for a good long time. I think that time should end now. So, I'm going to be giving this away to one of you guys for free, shipped basically anywhere in the world. Of note, it's just going to be the figure and his direct accessories. So him, all his armor, the shoulder cannons, and his gun, but not the little Energon cubes and the pink run he came with. If you guys want yourself a Siege Spoilers Ultra Magnus, you only need to do two things. One, you need to not have one, either a regular version or a spoilers version, or if you have one of those already and you want this one, then you need to give yours to someone else. And if you already have the normal one, think real hard about this first. Do you want this more than you want that? The answer may not actually be yes. And two, the only other thing you have to do is leave a comment on the video containing the phrase, I'd like a Magnus, please. Anywhere in it before 11.59 Pacific Standard Time tonight, the day of Sunday the 16th of May 2021. I'm putting it up on the screen right now so that way you know how to spell it. Don't forget the apostrophe in I. It doesn't have to be integrated in any way. You can work it into your comment or you can post it at the end of your comment or you can post that and that alone. I will select a winner at 12 a.m. tomorrow morning and with their blessing, I'll tell you all in the following video provided they responded in time. Anyways, since I covered what is essentially this figure several times, I thought it would be fun to start in reverse order this time. It's Kingdom Ultra Magnus. Vehicle mode on this is shitty. It's even worse than you might expect just looking at it. I'm so sorry I felt so confident saying that the photographer got this wrong, cause this mode is correct and just awful. You got the arms clearly chilling out on the back, the fists completely exposed, speaking of exposed, so are the screw holes, then you got this large, easily noticeable gap at the back, and despite it supposedly being an earth mode, there is still a huge amount of cyber stylization going on here. All of this was done in the name of making him look more accurate to the G1 design, but everything they did only made it look worse, and they completely botched what they were going for by making his bumper the wrong color. How do you mess that up? You go to all of these really shitty lengths to make it look like G1, and then you missed out on the really easy thing to do that was probably the most prominent feature of the front of his cab. Why are there blank spots for Autobot badges placed on the sides of the trailer? What is this, a knockoff? All that only encapsulates the look though, but the look isn't the only thing they ruined by changing all of this stuff for the sake of appearance alone. This holds together like shit. It's amazing how little they changed and how much stuff it negatively impacted. All they wanted to do was move the trailer back like an inch and it just fucked everything up. The cab is now only attached by these two crappy clips. It's hard to explain how flimsy the connection is. Because of how this is connected now, the top of the trailer likes popping up, so that's another thing this broke for no good reason. But it doesn't stop there. Since the shoulder pylons are no longer sandwiched between the two sets of feet, they mostly just stay where you put them due to the magnetic power of hope. So these fall off constantly as soon as they see the opportunity to. The ports on the back of the foot armor still exist, so if you have a different War for Cybertron Ultra Magnus, you can actually steal the shoulder pylons off of that and form the original connection type. This both looks better and holds together better despite the fact that they are now missing the only connection you technically had before. You can also do it with the new pylons, but they don't have pegs designed to lock in here, so it's less stable. But the front of the trailer still pegs adequately into the cab. So, at least if you think it's ugly, you still have options. I suppose the good news about how crap the connection is, is that it is really easy to separate him into just his cab mode. The cab is strange. It still has the arms just chilling out on the back, and it has these weird cutouts here. I can't tell if they exist to make rotation here easier, which does not seem likely, as these bits that are sticking up potentially in the way don't have to exist at all, or if they were made in a vain attempt to make him look skinnier in robot mode. I don't think anything has ever succeeded less. Transformation to the White Core Inner Optimus, or Optimus Magnus as I like to call it, is actually worse despite being identical. Specifically because the plastic in the torso feels thinner and cheaper, and the back mounted wheels on this one are less user friendly. The Optimus Magnus you get out of it is more of a Hostimus Magnus. He is real fat looking. He reminds me of how that guy from the Talking Heads wanted to make his head look smaller so he made his body look bigger, cause he's got a tiny bean on those shoulders. The color layout is good, and the sculpting is cool, but the proportions just piss all over it. He looks so damn uncool. Having a smaller torso would really help this guy out. Posing here is also a downgrade. Normally in this mode, he'd be able to kick all the way out to the back, but for some reason, on this version of the figure, they stuck a plate on his ass that blocks movement like as though the other versions of this figure with their wheels down. Outside of that, this is still doing better than when he's in his armored mode, because his head still has more range and the arms do have an uninhibited reverse butterfly. Outside of that, this mode is dead average for a siege figure. So far, we are kind of like, what, 0 for 5? 
It doesn't look good in car carrier mode. It doesn't look good in truck mode. It doesn't transform well. It doesn't look good in Optimus Magnus mode. And it has average posing with below average legs and above average shoulders. Armoring up this boy puts us at zero out of six. Again, it's basically exactly the same, but the tolerances are actually much worse here. So the parts are not fond of clinging to him. The shoulder pylons especially don't care to hang on. Though the backpack does clip in with the intensity and ferocity of a lawyer running after an ambulance. What is this, the 90s? Why am I making ambulance chaser jokes in this The Year of Our Lord 2021? The resulting robot mode finally puts us at 1 for 7. In this mode, he finally has a win. This is definitely better than any of the other versions of this figure. For starters, the white is actually white. This is crisp. A lot of times white can come off kind of dingy, but not here. This might be the whitest thing I've ever seen, and it is so pleasing. But it's not just the lack of pigment that's so crisp. The blue is exquisite, and the red, while probably a little drab and dark, still looks delish when paired with these other two hues. No visible Autobot logo from the front, though. Again, what is this, a knockoff? It should be right here, proud, prominent, and front-facing. Magnus is not the kind of guy who would be bashful about displaying his allegiance. And there even seems to be a smooth spot left for it? Are Hasbro seriously getting so cheap they are making customers put on Repro Faction badges themselves rather than painting their own official branding on the figures like they are supposed to? Another place where this guy takes the lead is in his sculpting. While the fronts of his shins are identical, almost everything on him is a flatter, fuller, and more complete surface. It really does give him an extraordinary visual edge. He just looks so finished, and it really does put into perspective how much I didn't realize Siege was inaccurate. For some reason I can no longer understand, I thought that the Siege figure looked like an incredibly close rendition of the character, who was only slightly stylized to fit the Cybertronian aesthetic of Siege. Looking at these two side by side, it's incredible how off the mark the Siege was. I don't mean that in like a detracting way, the Siege was on the mark for what it wanted to be, it was just a lot less accurate than I believed it was for whatever reason. For instance, the head sculpts. I don't know why I thought the Siege was so accurate. Man, that has got to be the longest it's ever taken me to get around to talking about the head sculpts. It's blatantly apparent who this is supposed to be, there is no way you are going to mistake this head for any other characters but it's missing some key iconic features. By contrast, while the Kingdom certainly isn't the perfect version, with its all-too-tall brain compartment being literally longer than the rest of his head, but it's far more the right shape, and it's got his classic aviators. It's really hard to describe just how important these are to his design, and yet somehow I completely failed to notice that the Siege version was absolutely lacking them. You may notice that the Kingdom has light piping, and normally I'd be pretty pissed about that, but honestly, here, it's actually a positive feature. It doesn't leave his eyes dead because the sunglasses are sitting in front of them, and the aviators actually kind of catch the light coming up from under them, which gives them some energy even when you aren't lighting them up. And the clear plastic is fairly well color match to the back of his head, so it's not an eyesore from behind. But it also has this really cool effect when you actually do the whole shoving the head up a light bulb's ass bit. The combination of the glasses and the light piping creates this really ethereal effect where his eyes are glowing behind the shades. Man, I talk about how much I hate light piping all the time, and every time it comes up recently, I've had nothing but positive things to say about it in the figures I've looked at. Posing on this mode is exactly the same as the other War for Cybertron Magnuses. Are you surprised? Really, there's nothing new to say here other than the arms lose out on the butterfly joint entirely unless you untransform them a bit, and even then, they are not as effective as they were. So I guess we are still 1 for 8. And before we go, let's talk about the accessories. Had to go in somewhere eventually. This also has to absolutely be the latest I've ever talked about accessories. He comes with his shoulder rockets, in a new sculpt, and in my opinion, a much more attractive one. He also comes with the exact same gun, this time cast in red, and painted with a lush metallic gunmetal color. This is easily the best version of this accessory that any of them have come with so far. However, he does not come with the leg cannons that the other versions did. I'm personally okay with this. I never thought those looked cool before. Like, they are so big and bulky, and putting them the only place they looked good made them more of a pain during transformation, so yeah, I don't miss them. So, I want to say that the accessories make them 2 for 9, but at the same time, they are just accessories. They don't count for that much. And it's missing too, anyways. Look, this is the same figure as the Siege one. It's got all of that thing's weaknesses and ones that it honestly didn't have. The only thing this has going for it is an accurate look to the G1 and an overall more attractive aesthetic, in one of the modes. If you don't have a Siege Ultra Magnus and you want one, this is a fine version to get if you are only in it for the robot mode. If not, the regular versions are probably the better ones to get. And if you already have one of those earlier figures, then you'd have to be crazy, just like me, to actually pick this one up in addition to the one you already got. This is not a bad figure, and personally, I'm glad I got it. But I think you should probably consider giving this one a pass, unless you really like the look of its one mode, or you don't have a Magnus in general, and you want something pretty cartoon accurate. Hey, finally, another video where I'm negative. At long last, all's right with the world again. And that's not half of what I have to say, but it's enough of what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.